So Canon announced the EOS R5C and before we get into it, let me just say that I am interested. So if you don't know, I've been using the R5 since it's come out and I actually just made a video on why it's the only camera I own. And then they announced this, which is basically an upgrade to the R5. So yeah, I'm excited. I wanna use this video as more of a discussion for us. Now, obviously I'm gonna give my opinion about some of the features listed, but I also wanna know what y'all think. And maybe we can also clarify some of this. So I'm here on the Canon website and I just quickly want to go over some of the features that stick out to me. So starting here at the top, it says that it shares common features and technology with the EOS R5 camera. So skimming through here, it looks like the same 45 megapixel sensor, 8K 60 frames per second raw video. And I think this is one of the big selling points. And it talks a bit about the photography capabilities with 1053 automatic autofocus zones eye, face, head detection, and also detection for animals and cars. Moving on, it says that when you switch into video mode, you'll get the familiar cinema EOS menu system with high level video features. So I'm assuming that this is gonna be pretty different from how the R5 menu works in video mode. I'm not sure. I've never used a Canon cinema camera, but I'm all for it. But it does say that the photography mode will be pretty much the same as it is on the R5. So that's good. Now, one of the big things for me here is that there's an internal cooling fan, and this is allowing for no limit on 8K 60p recording. The only limit is gonna be memory, and I'm sure that this is gonna eat up memory pretty quick, but the point to take away from this is that the camera should have no overheating issues. At least that's what I'm getting from it. When the R5 first dropped, you know that's what everybody was talking about, the overheating problems, and this should combat that. And at least for me, I actually like somewhat bigger cameras. Now, obviously not crazy big, but I don't mind the fan adding to the size. So here it looks like you can't record in full frame and high quality RAW, only in standard and light. To do high quality RAW, you'll have to enable a crop at Super 35 or Super 16. In Super 35, it'll be at 5.9K, and Super 16 will be 2.9K instead of the 8K. So real quick, it's a different day, but I just found this out, so I wanna throw it in. Apparently in 8K and 5.9K above 30 frames per second, as well as 2.9K above 60 frames per second, the battery isn't gonna have enough power to power the lens, so you're gonna lose autofocus in these modes. And if you wanna use autofocus in these modes, you'll have to use an external battery. And this can be an issue for some people, but I also feel like a lot of people are gonna be rigging this up, so they will have that external battery, but it's gonna depend on the person. But yeah, I just wanted to add that in there. Let's get back to the features. So looking at this table here, it seems like you won't be able to record 8K 60 frames per second in the MP4 format, it only goes up to 30p. It has 4K 60s, of course, but I wonder if this is the oversampled 4K or just the standard 4K. Maybe y'all can let me know. Here it says that it does have oversampling for 4K and 2K, so that's dope. And you're also gonna have 4K 120 as well, but I'm sure that that's not oversampled. Now, on the R5, you get both C-Log and C-Log 3, which came in an update, but the R5C seems to only come with C-Log 3. C-Log 3 gives me more dynamic range, but with the R5, I usually only use standard C-Log only because I tend to get more noise in C-Log 3. And it's like a green colored noise, so I don't really like it. And I'm not sure if this is something that's just in C-Log 3 or if it's the R5, but we'll have to wait and see how it holds up in the R5C. It looks like there's no IBIS in the R5C, only electronic stabilization, which I think is okay. The IBIS in the R5 is good, but as I've said before, it also can cause some issues in the footage, so I'm not mad at this. So look, I know this was a quick video, but that's all the features that I wanted to go through. There's more specs on the website, and if y'all wanna check that out, I'll leave a link down in the description. This is essentially an improved R5 with the focus on video, and you know, ultimately, I could look at all the specs and sit here and analyze it, but I'm more the type that I wanna get it in my hands and test it for myself. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on it when it drops. As far as the price, it's 4,500, and <laughs> y'all can let me know how y'all feel about that. And apparently it's supposed to be released in March. So let me know how y'all feel. Is this something you would get? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Let me know down in the comments. But that's gonna do it for this video. If y'all enjoy it, go ahead, drop this a like, jump down in the comments, let me know what y'all think. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. It only takes a second and I will see y'all real soon in my next one. Peace.